Hello there, Splinterlands players. I'm coming in under the wire here to try to do a video about the Taurus and Fighter. Now, this card is a newer card in the new set of cards. I don't have it at a high level, so I'm going to review the card. And then, lucky enough, I used it in some battles in a tournament. And then I was able to use the card at an equal level to kind of show its strengths and weaknesses. I have a win to show you and a loss to show you. Though the win, I was over leveled. But let's take a look at this card. So we got a four mana. At, at max level, this is an interesting setup. I think this would be a card that could be very playable in Little League and very low mana matches. Because four armor uh, f with four life, with repair, and with shield really means that he has eight life uh, you're gonna really wanna I mean it's a situational card to me though you want like no mages extremely low mana uh, maybe no heal matches with low mana because that four life I mean there's many mages that would just blow him away instantly he'd also be a very interesting card to use in a super sneak or melee monsters can attack from anywhere because if you don't have to use him as a tank then I think he's a very interesting card you can throw him in the last position to take shots off of uh, sneak monsters and he would be taking half damage since most of those are melee or ranged and he would be repairing your frontline tank if he had armor. So I like him more for that kind of setup. Unfortunately, I didn't get a game like that to show you. Um, at lower levels, I don't really like him. Um, he needs this shield ability before he becomes really useful. But I didn't really have a good match to show you right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you some matches. Uh, I think I broke down the card correctly though. He's not the best tank unless mana is very low and, and there's no mages allowed. And um, maybe you don't have to have no healing, but that'd be interesting because he has repair. But you could have just no mages and then he becomes a really good card because it's going to be hard for people to get through that four armor with the shield and his four life with him repairing his own shield. Possibly a healer in the background, possibly another repair card if you're using him uh, in the right kind of teams. So it does make much more sense to play him though in a situation where he is in your second and uh, hidden somewhere on your team because for four um, mana three attack is really good the two speed is a little bit of an issue even at this high level but it's not terrible and uh, sometimes he might be attacking uh, slower characters and then it doesn't make as big of a deal but I do like him in a Malay, Malay or Super Sneak uh, Malay Mayhem games because he's going to be much better if he's not your main tank. So I queued up a battle here that I won with him. So I'm going to get the rules set up and then pause it and then go with my idea. You'll see this was not the best example because we're not even leveled. Uh, so I'm probably going to win this fight, but you never know what's going to happen. Uh, in any match. He, d he didn't play a strong mage though, so that's to my advantage. He also played a sniper who's not going to hit him. That's to my advantage. He did play a pretty good tank. Uh, this is reverse speed, so he's two wasn't terrible. He played a one, but I backed him up with two one at one speed uh, opportunity monsters. And my real goal there was for him to just take a couple hits in the front row and let those opportunity monsters that both had one speed go wreck the other team. And so you'll see my theory of this match worked really well, but he wasn't necessarily that important. Um, because right there, his mage is gone. Right here, I'm going to really hurt his sniper. That's also why the albatross is on the board, is just to take hits and just delay any my opportunity monsters from getting in the front row, because I really wanted to watch them do a lot of damage. Uh, I had two mana left, so I put that little mage in the back row. Didn't end up doing anything in this match, but definitely the dual one-speed opportunity monsters while having the tortoise in the front with his armor to take a couple hits at these low levels, because literally it was, uh, it was a novice match, max summoner level two, I won the fight. And then I'm going to show you, <laughs> this one's kind of funny because it might be my only loss in this tournament, 
when I try to use him at a time that maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, see, I'm currently 9 and 1. And I tried to use him here in this fight. So we'll bring this up. I actually thought I would win this fight because, once again, I ran into somebody that had only level 1 cards. But this will show you that maybe he isn't the best tank. Uh, I did use kind of an under-level card. I only have him at was uh, only a him at level one um, and it also will just be an example that that two speed and the overall slowness that I have in my team uh, lets a level one team with some faster cards just be able to beat me especially with the summoner matchup he played no mages so my summoner didn't do anything for this match it's one of the things I kind of think about Bordis minus one that was a big miss too if I would have maybe hit that attack it might have helped a little bit not eh, I don't know maybe not much because I did take him out with my sneak magic attack but you'll see that the tortoise just died really quick and uh, overall here maybe my problem was is I put him in the front row as opposed to a different card and letting him kind of just sit in the back and take some pot shots at people I'll speed this up a little bit it, it was a close match but he wasn't able to tank well enough. I just couldn't in the end. My guys were too slow. They lost all the speed things that were important. Um, like right here, just if I had been able to attack, I could have won, but I was too slow. So it was kind of funny. Um, one of the things when you're playing in these un only untamed tournaments, you got to keep yourself to real basic setups sometimes. Otherwise, you're going to lose matches. As you see, I, d I usually do pretty good, but I was trying to squeeze him into a, a, a rule set where I thought, eh, it's Little League. He's four mana. Let's see how he does. And he just did not match up well uh, with the overall setup there, and I ended up losing that match. But anyways, I hope you're all having a good day. It's Sunday, so let's end the week strong. Get your quest done. Get your free cards. Maybe make sure you're playing in these tournaments. I love to see people on the battlefield. I actually got first place in one the other day. That was a pretty big one. and won 19,000 DEC. I was really tied with like six or seven people at 14 and 0. But that was pretty cool. It's my best finish. And uh, I used... Uh, a little bit of that DEC to buy some cards, and I'm holding on to the rest because I'm going to start saving up for the land sale. So I suggest you do that. I suggest you take your time to uh, come out and take part in these share your battle challenges. Even if you don't have epic battles to share, sometimes it's just nice to take a minute, talk about the game, or make a nice post, and just, you know, really promote the game because it could be going somewhere in the next few day, you know, months. We really hope that is what ends up happening with the land sale and the crafting and the expanded tournaments and the guild wars and all the things that they're working on that this game does make that next step and instead of just being the best crypto game out there uh, with the biggest user base but being one of the better just games out there with a with a real gamer user base of multiple thousands and thousands of players as opposed to I think we're doing pretty good right now but we're not we're not at that level that a game like Hearthstone is at, right? And I don't know if we need to get that big for us to be really successful, but that would be really exciting. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.